2007, 18-year-old Morgan Pressel took home the title at the time, becoming the youngest winner of an LPGA major championship leap into Poppy's Pond. What a moment for our colleague as we look back. It was her lone major championship win. Look at this resume, by the way. Also won the U.S. Women's Amateur in 2005, won the 2008 Kapalua LPGA Classic. You see all those times he represented the U.S. in the Solheim Cup, qualified for the U.S. Women's Open in 2001 at 12, played as a 13-year-old, and great to have Morgan Pressel with us on this Tuesday. Morgan, you became the youngest major champ in history, bogey free over your final 25 holes. What do you remember the most about that long ago week? Oh, gosh, it's such a whirlwind. It was really, um, I mean, just what a week it was for me, really propelling my career. It was my second year on tour, and I do very vividly remember going into that final round, four shots back, um, had nothing to lose, um, you know, all the pressure, as we have seen when players are in the lead going into a final round, all the pressure is always on them. And, you know, I had a little bit of maybe even not so quiet confidence. I think I was going to say quiet confidence. Maybe it wasn't even that quiet. And I just, I, I very vividly remember three putts, which if that tells you anything about the game of golf, how important putting is, I very vividly remember three putts that I made on that final round. One was a birdie putt on the 12th hole. One was a par putt on the 15th hole. And then was the birdie pot on 18 that at that time I didn't know was to win. Um, but I knew it really put me in a good position just to have a wonderful finish and, um, gosh, everything that transpired then waiting on the range, waiting to see what happened. It, it was all, it was all just kind of a bit of a blur. <laughs> Morgan, it wasn't just that you started four strokes back. It's who you started four strokes back of say repack and Suzanne Pedersen were leading heading into that final round. You were just 18. You'd been a proven winner on the AJGA Tour, but what were your nerves like by the time you got into that position on Sunday afternoon? I don't know that I was really that nervous, to be honest with you. Um, and I think when players really get into that zone, they, they lose that sense of nervousness in terms of a fearful nervousness, and they turn into more an excited form of those same kind of emotions um, like I knew that putt on 15 to save par was a huge putt for me and I wasn't necessarily as nervous as I was just excited and embracing the moment and there's only been a few times in my career where I've gotten into that space and I think uh, any athlete at top level would say that's what you're always looking to achieve and I think a little bit of that little bit of that came with youth and just a little bit of that came with how prepared I felt for that final round. You also finished third twice when the tournament was at Mission Hills. Now it's moved to the club at Carton Woods, new city, new venue. Are some of the veterans at a little bit of a disadvantage here when all of that institutional knowledge is gone and it doesn't count for anything anymore? Well, it's very different, right? It's a, it's a completely different golf course, completely different type of grass, very different conditions. And, and yes, everybody starts from scratch. I think, um, I think that gives some of the younger players a little bit more of a, I don't want to say more of a chance, but they give them a little bit more of a level playing field. And if we look at the history so far this season, we have three first time winners already in only six events. So uh, maybe we could look for some youth this week because of that, um, a little bit more of a level playing field. But then I'd say that you also have the veterans who can lean on the experience of having been in that moment time and time again. And just major pressure brings out uh, just so much more, so much more attention, uh, so much more nerves, uh, whatever it is, players wanting to peak for this week. And I think when it comes to peaking for a major, I would say that's where the veterans would have the upper hand and how to get that done. Morgan, you mentioned only six events so far. Does the LPGA need to do something different? How do you get momentum in a season when you only played six times compared to 17 events in 2023 on the PGA Tour? Yeah, it, it has been uh, a bit of a start and stop um, spring, I would say. And I think some of that is still a little bit lagging from COVID. Typically, we'd have a couple of events in Australia. Um, early in the season, and, and those were again canceled this year. So I'd say that, there, yes, 
I think yes is the answer. The LPGA, I think, is working hard to try and, and fill a little bit more of the front part of the season. You know, Tournament of Champions was four weeks before the next event. Um, and I think that's hard as a player because how can you peak for this, peak for that? And, and, and you feel like you almost had a second offseason, I think, some of the players that did play in Tournament of Champions. So it has been challenging. And I think that's something the LPGA knows and is trying to to plan for the future to hopefully kind of gain a little bit more momentum, not just for the players, but I think for the fans as well, um, really trying to get a good run up, especially to this first major championship. Morgan, you were a teenage star. What are the challenges for teenage stars? I'm talking Lydia Ko, Lexi Thompson, not to get burned out because they've been on the stage for so long. It's hard. I mean, I think we see that um, Lexi and Lydia, I don't know that either of them are burnt out, uh, but, you know, Lydia's made comments like she wants to retire when she's 28. And I don't know if she still wants to do that, but she has said that. And uh, you think that, you know, they started. And I mean, I guess I was similar in that sense. You know, I turned pro when I was 17. And it it does. It takes a balance. And I think we're seeing Lydia, especially in a really good place in her life with that balance, getting married over the off season is definitely happy both on and off the golf course. It's been fun to see quite the resurgence in her game. And I think those sorts of things are what help young players avoid burnout. It, it can be so easy to be golf, 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 all golf. You bring it home. It's all people the outside world really know you as. And I think it's important for players to have that inner circle that don't just treat you like Morgan the golfer and realize that you are more than just what your score is on any given day. Staying with Lydia and Lexi for a moment, Morgan, they both won their last major championship here at the Chevron. Lexi in 2016, or Lexi in 2014 and Lydia in 2016. Do you see any reason why they've had this major championship drought other than the fact that majors are just hard to win? Yeah, I mean, I think, what, there's only four, I guess five. There's five a year to win five opportunities. There's not that many when you think about it. It is hard. Lexi has been so close so many times, and I think uh, there are so many of us that really want to see her get over that finish line. And she has the, she has the whole game, and it's just about putting it together for those five weeks one of those five weeks of the year. And I talked to her last night at the champions dinner and we talked a little bit about the golf course. And, you know, one of the first things she said to me was it's long. How does that, I think that plays pretty well into Lexi's hands and being a pretty long golf course uh, with her length and her power and especially her ball striking, um, being able to control her iron play around these very large greens where you want to really make sure you're in the right section. And Lydia, I think we have seen Lydia struggle with her game. What, most people <laughs> would die to have the seasons that she's had, but we're going to call Lydia being in a slight slump. She has really come out of that um, just incredibly well. I mean, player of the year last year, you know, their trophy, CME, her win at CME, um, being in the lead almost the entire championship was really, really impressive. And I think we're seeing that major winning form from Lydia uh, coming into this week. You mentioned earlier, Morgan, that we've had multiple first-time winners on the LPGA Tour this year. Your first LPGA Tour win was a major here at the Chevron. The last two Chevron champions in Jennifer Cupcho and Paddy Tavitanikit, also first-time winners. What's the better narrative for the LPGA Tour this week? Is it another rising star coming up? Or is it someone like a Jin Young Ko or Nelly Korda or Lydia Ko or Lexi getting that statement victory again? I think that's a really good question. Um, I, I think the fact that we have both options is really fantastic and it could go either way. I think to build that superstar, whether it be a Nelly, whether it be a Lydia, whether it be a Jin Young Ko who becomes a household name uh, is only going to continue to propel the LPGA forward. But could it, could that be somebody that we don't know yet about? And that's very possible. So I think both ends of that spectrum um, can be a win-win. And I think what the tour has missed in the last, I mean, I don't even know how many years, maybe five, 10 years or so, is that truly dominant player. And that person that truly becomes a household name, and I definitely believe that Nelly has the ability to do that. I think that Lydia is already on her way to being there. So maybe 
to really create uh, that fan engagement and that fan interest. I would say Lexi mm. is also kind of in that um, in terms of superstar beyond the world of golf. Um, so to have one of them win is really helpful, but also uh, they all had their first win when nobody really knew who they were. And I think uh, we have to remember that as well. Well, Morgan, looking forward to your call starting Thursday. Thanks so much for the time. Have a great week in Houston. Thanks, guys. Love being with you.